I played pro football for five years. I was one of the lucky ones to escape without long-term injury. <laughs> well, my name is Mark Hatfield. I'm a retired CFL football player. I know what you're thinking. That guy is living on Easy Street. Actually, I'm living on Rideau Street. <laughs> Played three seasons with the BC Lions. My biggest fan was my mom. She never missed a game. My third season, we made it to the Western Final. A few hours before kickoff, I got to the stadium and I ran into my mom and she painted the number 48 on both cheeks. And I said, Mom, pull up your pants. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I just want everyone to know that you're my son. And I thought that's beautiful. But I'm number 66. <laughs> For three years, she was watching the wrong guy. <laughs> For three years, she was watching a little black guy. <laughs> that's very humbling. Pro football player is anything but humble. In fact, I know a guy that even today carries around a stack of his own football cards and hands them out to people he wants to sleep with. There you go, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wait. You know, fuck it, let's give it to the triple team over here. Yeah. We'll get a big bed. <laughs> Something without memory foam. We're not gonna want to remember that. There is no expiration date, but there is a best before. Also spent two seasons in the NFL. 1995, I played with the Dolphins. Cost 80 bucks at SeaWorld. In 96, I was with the Detroit Lions. Other players on the team were not happy to have a Canadian there. On my first day, this big dude, Henry Thomas, comes up to me and goes, Hatfield, you're a dead man. I'm from Canada, I'm not gonna do that kind of shit. <laughs> so I got all up in his face and I said, Sorry about that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I punched him in the teeth. <laughs> Young kids dream of playing pro football, but they just don't have what it takes. Or they just don't have a prescription for what it takes. <laughs> they don't know a good veterinarian. <laughs> People ask me if I ever took steroids, and I always say, <laughs> Fuck it, you get a car too. <laughs> People always ask me if I ever dated any cheerleaders. And there's a strict no dating a cheerleader policy, so I, I never dated any cheerleaders. Fuck them all! <laughs> <laughs> cheerleaders make great lovers. Even the girls. <laughs> I'm now married with, uh, with kids. <laughs> a lot of similarities between marriage and pro football. You work hard all week in hopes of getting an election on the weekend. You live in fear that the owner's going to replace you with a black guy. <laughs> and at that game, it's really, really just a game of inches at that point. <laughs> have a very beautiful story. We met in Fiji. I mean, on Kijiji. <laughs> it's not so beautiful. You two look like a happy couple. Are you two married? No. So you are happy. <laughs> you guys hold hands in public? Yeah, sure. Oh, 
that's full of shit. <laughs> I was holding my wife's hand this afternoon, trying to stop her from going into HomeSense. <laughs> Every guy in the place has that thousand yard stare. I just got back from Afghanistan. I went to the bathroom, full of dudes, hiding. <laughs> Staring in the mirror, crying. Hello is playing on the speaker. Lionel Richie version, not Adele. camping last weekend, but all I could find was a two-man tent. <laughs> so I took her brother. <laughs> Sex was awkward. <laughs> but from behind, they looked very similar. Secret to a great marriage when you got kids is once every couple weeks you get a babysitter and you go on a date night. I've had some amazing evenings with my babysitter. <laughs> babysitter hates that joke. He told me when we were camping. 